Oh, you just pressed play on This Week with Drunk Astrology. My name is Graham Breitenstein. I'm your astrologer and the creator of Drunk Astrology. If you're looking for someone to make astrology make sense to you and for you, well, my friend, you have come to the right place. Here on this podcast, we discuss the weekly cosmic weather. And when we break it down, we break it down. I believe that astrology can be used as a tool to inform your daily decisions and enhance your day-to-day life. So if you're ready to have a hell of a lot of fun with astrology, make some strategic decisions, and to just keep it real, (laughs) well, that journey starts right now. Happy Monday, Astro Lovers. This podcast is coming to you uh, a day late. Because your astrologer's been super busy. But nevertheless, this is the podcast for the week of August 15th through the 21st, 2022. You guys, this is the last week of Leo season. You heard it right. The last week. So I really want you to commit to creating something for yourself this week. So that can be committing to doing nothing because you already are a workhorse and you just do too much. So you're going to commit to taking care of yourself better. Or you're going to commit to, you know, I don't know, writing a poem and sharing it on Instagram. Or anything. Anything that is bold, beautiful, glamorous. You know, maybe you're going to commit to dressing up and going on a date night. Even if it's taking yourself out on a date night, you don't have to have a significant other for that ish. But I want you to commit to doing something. This is a conversation that I started on Instagram over the weekend, and I wanted to carry it here to the listeners of this podcast because Leo season is just all about fun, and it is about sharing because the opposite sign of Aquarius says, okay, my duty is my duty as Leo energy, and you're all honorary Leos right now. Your duty as a Leo is to create something, and now you beam across to Aquarius on the opposite side of the Zodiac and say, now share it with the world. Put it out. Give it to the community. Give it back in a way that um, others can learn from it, grow from it, um, or get inspired to express themselves because you expressed yourself in a way. So it's all about this last week of Leo season is really about that last push of fun, of energy, of adventure, of spontaneity. Um, it is fixed fire, so <laughs> and Venus is in Leo too. So there is this like I want what I want when I want it component to the sky, but that's low form, right? We're we're going high form, and if you feel yourself latching on to I want what I want when I want it then pull back from that. You got to get out of that um, tunnel vision that these fixed signs can can uh, find themselves, the, the rabbit hole that they can find themselves in is latching on, digging their claws in deep into something, someone that good, bad, or indifferent, it's just normal, so they stick with it. That's not what we want to do. I want you to tap into this energy and let your hair down. Get some attention. You know, ask for attention. Demand attention. You know, depending on where you're at in, with, in, in all of these matters, that's, that's the idea. There's nothing wrong with Leo's loving attention. And there's nothing wrong with the energy that says like, oh, I, your astrologer here personally, I have a Leo Venus and all my other personal planets are in Virgo. So the Virgo is way more like work focused and, you know, I just, you know, head down, let's do a really good job. But then there's the Leo Venus side of me that's like, well, I want to be acknowledged and I want I want to be recognized for the hard work that the Virgo energy is doing. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with like that that level of attention. But when it goes self-serving, that's when you want to beware of the low form of, of Leo energy. So I think Leo is a sign that gets a bad rep. I guess all signs in their own right can get a bad rep, but... Virgos for sure, overly critical, annoying, um, you know, that, that you can run the gamut. But with Leo energy like that, there's nothing wrong with their life source energy coming from attention. It's just 
how how you use the attention. What's the motivation behind? What's what's the aftermath of that attention? Do you just take the attention and say, "Oh, I feel good," or do you take the attention to serve others better? And that's really that play between Leo and Aquarius because Aquarius is so aware of the group and the community and the effect of how one one single action can have a huge impact on a group. So just take that with you. This is your cosmic permission slip to this week, committing to enjoying yourself, having a little bit of fun, getting dolled up, getting glammed. I want to see some outfits. So if you listen to this and you're on social media, can you please Take a picture and send it to me. DM it to me, please. Post uh, post it to your story or something and tag me and said, Drunk Astrology made me get dressed up this week, made me doll up, made me put makeup on, made me, made me put, you know, made, made me get out of my pajamas and do this at least once this week. Take yourself on a date. Take your significant other on a date. Um, get romantic. Get And we're going to have at the end of the week um, on Sunday night, the moon will be in Cancer, so it's just like that's when you really are going to want to top of next week, end of this week, top of next week. You're really going to want to cozy up, um, cuddle up with, with some loved ones, with your lava lava. Um, but also we have a Taurus moon this week, and Taurus moons are great for, you know, being home, stress-free. You don't have to rush anything. It's about listening to good music, sitting still, having nice food. So, I mean, we're going to talk about all this. In more detail. Now, I want to do a little weekend recap. So, we had the Sun-Saturn opposition that perfected on Sunday at, what time was that? 10, 11 a.m. Pacific. Just remember all the times they give you in this podcast are always Pacific daylight time. So, that Sun-Saturn opposition is a little bit of a slam dunk, right? And it's kind of like in in a dynamic where Saturn is like some authority figure or like a boss, or someone that you're working with, um, where there's, you know, there's a little bit of a slam dunk. So wherever you feel like you got like slammed over the weekend, you know, so it could, you know, just think, Sun's in Leo, Saturn's in Aquarius, has to do with like something that you want versus like what someone else wants from you or expects from you. Um, And, you know, so any kind of, lay that across any kind of relationships, if you know your chart, what are the houses that rule Leo and Aquarius? Um, or what are the houses ruled by Leo and Aquarius? What planets are there? And you can start getting to the flavor of where that slam dunk was. And this is what we're this is what we're going to be working with. Remember, Cancer season, and as all the planets were dancing in Cancer, Mercury and Venus, along with the Sun, we had the oppositions to Pluto, right? So, like exposing power dynamics, power struggles. Um, power plays, abuse of power, um, you know, just what what needs to change on a systemic level. Now the Sun Saturn comes around and is just like, you know, here's here's the repercussions, consequences. Now, you know, now it's like now we have to refocus and re-strategize, restructure what's not working. And it's a it's oppositions to Saturn are a no energy, but just remember that any no you might have received over the weekend is something to evaluate and something to take with you and say, okay, this is a no in this situation. This is a no temporarily, but you take the lesson from the opposition. Oppositions bring clarity. Remember, it's like a full moon energy, which we're still under. We're under the Aquarius full moon beams until the 27th. Until that Virgo new moon hits. So I want you to take the clarity of what you might have experienced over the weekend and say, now, how do I want to adjust moving forward? Because Venus is going to come into her opposition. And let's see when that is going to be. I thought I had it written down on my thing, but I don't. Hold on. I'm going to tell you in two seconds. That's her square to Uranus. I don't want that. Ah, on the 28th of this month. So Mercury's done it. Now the sun has done it. And now Venus will come to do it. Now Venus kind of lightens the mood anyway. So when she does it, it's going to be more of like, "Mm, okay, like, let's see, is this relationship right? Yes or no? 
Um, is the is the nature of this relationship right? Yes or no? And you're gonna go from there. But Mercury, like Mercury, delivers the news first and just kind of says, eh, "I want you to be aware of this." And then the Sun comes and like highlights it, shines a nice beam on it. And then Venus comes and goes, oh, okay, let's just, let's just, you know, she's looking for balance. She's looking for harmony and she wants to connect and relate at, underneath it all. So a slam dunk with Saturn is just more like a shift, an adjustment. So now it's like you're aware of what you, you've seen what you need to see now. So now how do you want to move forward? And I want you to think about that. Like just kind of reflect on this past weekend, the 12th, 13th, 14th of August and say, okay, where do I feel? You know, you might already know. I certainly know mine where you go like, oh, okay, yeah, my slam dunk was this. That's not going to work for me. So now how do I adjust and how do I, how do I just change moving forward? So just take that with you. I want to do a little recap now to just kind of give you, we're going to shift into a overlook of this week. We have the moon going from Aries, Taurus, Gemini, and at the very end of Sunday evening, we have the moon entering Cancer. Um, Taurus moons and Cancer moons are always wonderful. The moon is exalted in Taurus. She loves being in slow, steady, no need to rush, and taking care. Like, let me take care of myself. Let me take care of my loved ones. Um, let me, you know, let's. that's a great date night. Date moons, Taurus moons. So late Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, those are great date night days. Um, and then when we get to Cancer at the end of the week and to top of next week, that's like the cuddly, cozy. Um, but, you know, and then Aries and Gemini moons aren't bad. Aries moons, we can just be a little more impulsive. We can be a little bit more argumentative, brave, and bold. But the overall energy is. Even even the nicest person who avoids conflict can have the, the chutzpah to stand up for themselves and to say, like, hey, this isn't going to work. Or, you know, to protect themselves in some way, um, to kind of, like, armor up. So you want to make sure on, on Aries moons that you're not being, you know, overly impulsive or abrasive or aggressive, um, but that you, that you, if you need a little extra confidence boost in something that you're trying to accomplish and you want to do this week, Aries moons are great for that. Um, and they're about strategy. Remember that it's Mars energy. So Mars as the god of war never just ran into war. There was a full you know, strategy involved in saying, oh, we're going to attack from the east um, when the sun is, is setting in the west. And you know, you know what I'm saying. So that's great. And then Gemini moons are where communication, you know, it's a great, it's a great like, hey, like you want to go hang out. This is a great weekend to like hang out with your people um, Friday and Saturday um, into Sunday evening. Um, but we can be a little more restless because it's Mercury energy and Mercury is buzzy and it's it's information overload. So it's a great time to kind of mix, mingle, take a little short road trip even. Like so this weekend, if you don't have plans, you know, this is a great time to say, you know what, let's just go an hour out and, you know, check out this lake or check out this hike or, you know, just to kind of like get out and about. But check out a new neighborhood. Um, Gemini moons are great for that. Um, but also this week, we've got Mercury-Uranus trine, which is, you know, Mercury's in Virgo, Uranus is in Taurus. They're working together beautifully. So it's a great idea, a great opportunity um, for on the work front for sure. But you find your Virgo-Taurus and you like, move move through it. So it's, it's a great day to like think tank with someone. Um, my friend and I are going to be doing like pitch deck work for some other stuff that, that we have in the works. Um, great day for that. We have Venus trying Jupiter, which is just the two benefics just coming together. Benefic meaning their influence is mostly positive um, in your natal chart and in your transiting charts. So that's like a nice like love boost, love just juicy yumminess. It's under that Taurus moon. Also that day we got the North Node direct. The only day, the only only day in August that the nodes are direct is Thursday the 18th. Coupled with the Venus-Jupiter trine, 
Guys, if you have any kind of pitch, if you have any kind of, um, like like with me, I'm wholesaling my Zodiac Superlative Candles, my Cosmic Body Oils. I wholesale to other stores, and this is the day. If you do something like that where you want to, where you want to like you know meet a store owner, you want to go into a place and you have something to pitch, you have something to say, deliver. Um, if you have any kind of proposal, if you have any kind of anything related to relationship, you know. So don't just think romantic. I want you to think like all relationships of all kind, professional, platonic, family. You make that your day. Um, there's some other good days. I mean, the Taurus moon in general. Um, but in the Gemini moon over the weekend, but this is the, the ding, 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 the gold star day. Okay. So Thursday, the 18th, I just want you to mark that. Now that's also the Taurus quarter moon quarter moon days can be stressful. Um, this is the fourth quarter. So after the full moon, the moon is now waning down and like disintegrating a little bit, right? She's decreasing in light. Um, so this is like where we we draw back, we reflect on the full moon energy. So where that Aquarius full moon hits your chart, where you're feeling like you're evaluating um, and saying what's working, what's not. Since the very beginning of February, right? So full moons culminate a story that began under the corresponding new moon. So you jump back to the first two weeks of February and say, okay, the things that were happening then, the stories that began then, now I'm culminating I'm culminating that very story right now. And this Taurus quarter moon, this fourth quarter, is now like, okay, so let's like let's evaluate what did I let's and reflect what did I accomplish, what didn't I, what needs to shift, and how do I want to move forward? And it's just this, you know, it can be stressful, but just just know that you're now emptying the tank, so to speak, so that when the Virgo new moon hits next Saturday, the 27th, that's when you, you, you've you cleared the vessel. So now you can throw in, you can add in because those new moons, the moon is invisible, right? So it's an empty vessel ready for you to... It's listening to you. So, oh, so what do you want to manifest this go around? What do you want to, now that you've made space, now that you've cleared up what the Aquarius full moon was bringing to light, now tell me what you want. And I'll, and then we'll get to work because it's going to be Virgo energy. So just keep that in mind. But Thursday, very powerful, very potent day. Um, and the other, but there's two other, but this is the biggie. This is a biggie, biggie. Is Mars enters Gemini on Saturday the 20th. Now, when Mars enters Gemini, folks, he's going to be in this sign until March 26th, 2023. And that's because he's got a retrograde coming up October 30th through January 12th of 23. This is a very long stay for Mars and Gemini. Now, when Mars is in Gemini, variety is the spice of life. And you know what the biggest turn-ons are when Mars is in Gemini? It's that mind, baby. It's that mind. What, are you smart? Are you intelligent? Can you hold a conversation? Can I bring you home to my family? Can you survive a conversation with my crazy aunt? And what about when my mother grills you on what, you know, what you do for work? Are you going to be able to hold up? Can you take that? That's because now Mars is going to be talking and answering to Mercury. Now, what's going to be interesting is that Mercury, by the end of this month, will be in his retrograde shadow. And then he will retrograde through September. So that means Mars is going to be in Gemini answering to a retrograde Mercury, and then Mercury will clear up all of his retrograde story, and then Mars himself will station retrograde. So this is going to be quite a buzzy, whizzy, and persnickety Mars in Gemini (laughs) Um, because he's going to be here so long. So you really want to locate the Gemini section of your chart if you have any houses and planets or points. You want to notate that because that is going to light up like a Christmas tree. Now, Mars and Gemini is a great 
Um, you know, he's going to be energized by collaboration. He's going to be energized by partnership. He's going to be ener- energized by people that he can communicate with, right? And work with in a way that's like, oh, this is exciting. This is buzzy. Like, and in a mutable way, this is mutable air. So as a mutable air sign, you know, it's about change. And that's where variety comes in. So the actions you want to take are going to be very, it's going to be very important for you to explore all the options. You know, like now not to go into like a Gemini loophole of like, well, it could be this, it could be that, it could be this, it could be that, it could be this, it could be that. Instead, you want to do proper research and say, okay, so if I want to go this way, I have my, my three best options are A, B, and C. And now let's just weigh out pros and cons of each one. And now let's actually start reaching out. Let's actually start collaborating or start the conversation with each of these options and see which one feels the best, right? So it's just more of like the strategy is let's go one step at a time. Let's do our due diligence. Let's do our research. And let's consider the end game and how many different ways you can get there. Right. And and that's not a permission slip to go into a rabbit hole. Again, it's just more of like, let's just say three is my favorite number. And I feel like in this situation, three is the magic number. If you have three options to explore that are best for you in whichever way Mars is interacting with your chart, which we can figure out in readings, just so you know, just so anyone listening is like, well, how am I supposed to figure this out? This is what readings are for. This is what your astrologers are for. <laughs> this is what we do. <laughs> um, that, but this is where this is where there's going to be a lot of energy and a lot of focus for the rest of the year. As of Saturday, the 20th of this month, that Gemini area of your chart is lit up. It's ready for Christmas. The Christmas tree is here. Okay, so you know, like like for Virgos, it's in our tenth house. That's career, success, ambition. So that's a lot. That's a lot of things. That's at the top of the chart. So for Virgos, this can be a very important time to evaluate. You know what is what's the work that you're willing to do? What's your goal? What's your game plan? And now strategize, strategize the different options. Um, and uh, you know, and then for all the different signs, it'll be different. But just speaking on that for just to give my to give you an example, just using my own chart. Um, or if you're a Virgo listening, you now know Mars is energizing that 10th house. So major, major professional moves can be made and major success stories can come out of a transit like this. Um, but you got to take your time because like remember, like it's seven months of Mars in one sign. And that, that's a lot of energy, that's a lot of focus, that's a lot of drive, it's a lot of motivation and inspiration. So it's like, okay, you got to be able to like run with that and and not not gas out in, in, the, in the early stages, but to really play the long game. And the long game is knowing your end goal and exploring options to get there. Okay? And then on Sunday, we have the Mercury-Neptune opposition. So Mercury, Virgo, Neptune, Pisces. What's real? What's fantasy? What's um, tangible? And what is just ideas? What what are just like oh these like flurry flurry unicorn uh, magic things where Neptune and Pisces is like yeah it could be this it could be that it could be this but Mercury's coming to say like no but this is what it is like until you can show me otherwise this is what it is and I don't want to hear any more. <laughs> I don't want to live in this like lofty space. When Merc- when Virgo energy meets Pisces energy, it's like, okay, like the dreams are great, but now how are we actually going to make this work on a daily on a daily basis, right? So Neptune's dreaming really big and, and Virgo is like, ah, okay, well, there's daily actions that need to happen in order to make this big thing reality. So let's let's get down to brass tacks. That's really the energy of that Mercury Neptune opposition. Now that takes place just after midnight on Sunday the 21st. So it is kind of something that blankets over the weekend. Just keep that in mind. Um and it moves us into next week when Virgo season begins and 
next week, Uranus will station retrograde. So adding to those outer planets, um, Uranus is the last of them to go retrograde. So it's going to just join the gamut. And it's going to start reviewing all the things that he's been blowing up and shaking and quaking in your life (laughs) in the Taurus area of your chart. Remember, he just moved out of his conjunction with the North Node, right, starting a 15-year cycle. So now he's going to go back and go, okay, I I shook up enough. Now let's go back and review. Like what what else, you know, now that I've exposed and shake shooketh thee, now here's how we I, I'm going to, over the next like five-ish months, now we're going to go back and, you know, just kind of make some more changes, make some more adjustments, but it's it's nothing that's not already in motion. So don't freak out about that. Um, all right, let's talk about these moons really quick and get you on to your week. So as we start today, Monday, August 15th, the moon is in Aries. Just has a, like a few, um, has two, a conjunction to Jupiter, conjunction to Chiron. Um, so, you know, that's just ending and beginning. Um, and this is like the lunar cycle has kicked over again, right? So yesterday on Sunday, the moon entered Aries. So now the moon is in a brand new, fresh um, phase, right? So she's starting her whole new like 28-ish day cycle around the zodiac. So this is nice rebirth, refresh, re-energized um, energy. So that's great. So just roll with that. Then Tuesday, the Aries moon goes void at 1.18 p.m. with a square to Pluto. So that's separative, that's stressful, um, can be a little argumentative. Um, but just kind of saying, okay, there's an energy of overcoming some sort of change. At 7.22 p.m. Tuesday, the moon enters Taurus where she is exalted, happy, and just making all kinds of, you know, Moves that aren't stressful or hurried. She's more just like, "Mm, let's just sit still. You know, let's appreciate the beauty of Earth. You know, let's watch a sunset. Let's make some art. Um, You know, let's take care of some money matters. You know, she, she loves being in Taurus. She's in Taurus all day Wednesday the 17th. With one square to Venus, that's just, but that's her ruling planet. So that's just, you know, an energy of, yes, like overcoming something in relationship. But, you know, more so, like, the objective is I still want to connect. I still want to relate. I still want to partner with you, but not like this. On the on Thursday the 18th, the moon is still in Taurus. She's making a lot of aspects, though, including that quarter moon. She's got one, two, three, four, five um, most are productive and really nice energy. So Thursday, again, is that power day, North Node Direct, Venus with Jupiter, and that quarter moon. So you're just, you're moving ahead and you're getting ready to, you're, you're doing the last little bits of cleaning out your vessel so that you can really add in um, under the 27th of August, Virgo New Moon. Then on Friday the 19th, the Taurus moon goes void at 4.06 a.m. with a conjunction to Mars. Now, conjunctions to Mars are, you know, again, ending and beginning because conjunctions, they're meeting up. And this this moon is like, okay, I'm going to end a dynamic this way. I'm going to end a relationship one way, and I'm going to start and energize it another way, right? So it's a... It's changing the nature of relationships and the strategy within relationships. So especially when it comes to professional relationships this week, there is a there is an energy there of like saying, okay, working together like this isn't it, but here's an option. You know, here's another way that I think that we can do it. That's really the idea that I, I want you to explore this week is as you as you work with relationships. Okay, then the moon on Friday enters Gemini at 5.06 a.m., has a lovely sextile to Jupiter that night. Telling you, great date nights this week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Lovely. Sunday, like, nuzzle up at home and just, like, be just, like, warm and fuzzy. Um, Let's see. Saturday the 20th, the Gemini moon has a nice sextile to Venus and Chiron. So great moving forward energy. And it's more like, ooh, I'm nervous. And it's also the moon in Gemini is, you know, going to help usher in Mars entering Gemini, um, which takes place at 1256 that morning, Saturday the 20th. 
And then Sunday, the Gemini moon goes void at 3.06 p.m. with a sextile to sun. So that is really like moving forward in a way that just gives you the like, like you're kind of like anxious Annie. You know, like, oh, God, oh, gosh, oh, my gosh, this is uh, this is like, uh, I'm, I'm restless. Like, I, I kind of like, I, I need to talk about it. I want, you know, I need two of everything, at least two of everything. Um, but, you know, maybe you're like, you know, maybe you take a, a day trip to kind of woosah decompress or, you know, you, you're you moving forward in a way that's just like really exciting. It's sextile to the sun. Like, that's really, that's big. That's life force energy. It's right before um, the sun's going to enter Virgo next Monday, the 22nd. So, ooh, I love it. I love the energy of this weekend. Um, that Mercury-Neptune opposition can kind of like, mm, you know, like, Let's get down to brass tacks, that vibe. But other than that, I love the energy of this weekend. Um, the moon enters Cancer Sunday the 21st. Um, enters Cancer at 5.29 p.m. And it goes void Wednesday the 24th uh, at 2.40 a.m. with a sextile to Mercury. So great, great closing aspect to that. The weekend is really nice. Um the only other aspects that I want to point out to you are Tuesday, the Mercury-Uranus trine at 1046 in the morning. Great day to think tank and to explore um, creative ideas um, or just like whatever you're working on. Um, it's it's like the, 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 the ideas can just come and flow and really kind of be like, man, why didn't I think about that before? Like this is such a good idea. So capture really good ideas on Tuesday. The sun has a quincunx to Neptune on Wednesday the 17th, though that's just kind of an unexpected curveball, unexpected like, oh gosh, I didn't know I had to do this, but like I have to. Remember, sun and Leo is just like trying to have a good time and trying to do what it wants. And then Neptune is like, yeah, but like, uh, 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 uh. I know I know, I didn't give you any kind of heads up, but like you got to do this thing. And then where was my last one? Friday the 19th, the sun has a quincunx to Pluto. So again, that's an adjusting energy. Quincunxes are pretty annoying. Pluto is changing. So just think about like the things that are like going on behind the scenes or something. The sun comes and is like, oop, this is, you know, oh, wait a minute. This is what's going on. And it's just kind of a little bit of like a, a like a like little like thorn in your side. Like, really? Really? Okay. All right. Sure, that's at 9, 10 in the morning. And that's it. So that is it for me. I will catch you on social media. Um, I am debating, and maybe those of you that listen to this podcast all the way to the end, you can tell me. You can reach out to me um, as you will. But I'm debating if I want to bring back my Virgo season self-care challenge. And if you have made it all the way to the end, please let me know. Last year, I did the Virgo season self-care challenge, which is each day during Virgo season, you do one thing to take care of yourself and you share it. Um, and you share it you know, by putting it on your story. You can post it. You can just DM me. But you, know, you share some way. Um, you, know, you take care of yourself some way once a day. It could be something very, very small. Like, you know what? I made myself um, an extra latte today. That's one of the things that I like to do. It's like, you know what? I, I've earned a second coffee today, so I'm going to do it. Um, or it can be something like as big as like, oh, I went and got a massage. Like, you know what? My body's been sore and I've been working a lot and I owe myself like a good, you know, a good massage or a good Epsom salt bath at home and I poured myself a glass of wine, anything. But the idea is to take the energy of Virgo, which wants to serve and to assist and help, especially when it comes to health and wellness, but it's just a way to do it together in the community. So anyway, I'm debating if I want to bring that back, and I will let you guys tell me. Um, so let me know, and I'll also probably do some polls and stuff um, throughout the week on Instagram. So that's it for me. Enjoy your week. Have a great time. If it's time for a reading, you know where to find me, drunkastro.com. Also, the links are in the show notes, and I'll see you soon. Bye. This is Graham Breitenstein, and you've been listening to This Week with Drunk Astrology. If you want to follow Drunk Astrology, head to Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and hit that follow button. And if you want to learn how to put astrology in motion for you, 
head to DrunkAstro.com and get on the insider list. If you haven't already, subscribe, rate, and review this podcast on Apple, Spotify, and Google platforms. Tune in next week for yet another opportunity to work in sync with the stars. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you soon.